I had to choose one color coronamid pupa to fish or start exploring new water with, it would be a black and red. A black body complemented with a red rib. My black sally fits this philosophy to a T. Make sure you have the following list of materials on hand to add this proven pupa pattern to the coronamid section in your fly box. So let's tie the black sally. Into the jaws of my Regal, I've placed a Daiichi 1120 down eye heavy wire scud pupa hook. And then I put a 764 black, uh, black nickel bead on. Uh, for number 10 here, I would use a 764. For smaller sizes, 12s and 14s, 3 30 seconds. I've got the narrow end of the bead facing the hook eye. And I'm just going to slide that back out of the way. Get my tying thread onto the hook, trim away the excess. For the gills, I'm going to use a section of the Spirit River UV2 Sparkle Yarn in white. This has got nice vibrant color when it's down at depth and it's got good compressibility so I can easily slide the bead over top. So I'm just going to quickly bring my thread back up to the hook eye, leave a little bit of the yarn protruding out over the front, pull it up a bit. This simply just cocks the gills up a bit and keeps them out of the hook eye so I can more effectively tie the hook on. I'm going to take my sparkle yarn back at least past where I envisioned the bead to go. I'm going to come in, trim off the excess yarn. I'm going to use the yarn to help build up the underbody foundation in the front half of the fly. And then I'm just going to whip finish at this point and remove the tying thread. Now if I was tying a lot of these black sallies or any of the chronomid with this style of gills, this step of gilling a hook I would do first for six or eight or ten or however many chronomid patterns I wanted to do. But we're doing a one-off here so the bead's already on the hook. So the bead's on, push it forward, tight up against the hook eye, reattach my tying thread, Nice close touching turns. If I pull up on the thread like this, my thread wraps slide down the little thread ramp by the tag end and keeps them nice and tight together. And then I can just come in and nip off the excess and continue down the shank slightly into the bend. I always use about a whoops, over wrapped a bit here. I always use about about a 45 degree angle between the hook shank and the point to know that I've gone far enough. I'm just going to let that hang. I'm going to tie in our ribbing. I'm also going to use this ribbing to form a butt. And for that, you can use red holographic mylar off a spool. Or I've got some flashaboo here, number 6996, the red holographic flashaboo. Really well used. I'm just going to take the tying thread, big open wraps, back up. I'm going to hold my ribbing material right along the side of the hook. Catch it and then secure it all the way down the near side of the hook. That's how I tie my ribs for all flies. Nymphs, chronomids, wire, mylar. Just find they wind best like this. And then I'm going to take my tying thread back up a couple of turns. Just back of the hook, hook point so I don't uh, accidentally nick the thread. For the body I'm going to use black flashaboo. The code is 6912. So I've taken two strands out of the package. I've moistened the ends to keep them together to ease the tie-in process, just get them in place on the shank, secure them back down to the back where the rib is, and then come forward and big open turns. You can then perhaps build up a little body taper, usually in the front third of the thorax to match the natural taper of the chronomid pupa, and then let that thread hang. Now to add a little durability, the chronomid. I'm going to take some brushable super glue. This happens to be crazy glue, but there's lots of good ones out there. And I'm just going to lightly tap that to the thread. Let it sit a sec. It'll uh, start to cure up, which will only help grip the material. It's going to take both strands of our flashaboo and carefully wind forward in close touching turns, watching out for that hook point. Build up a nice shiny black flashaboo body. All the way 
for that. The beauty of this uh, super glue is obviously it glues the materials down from underneath, really securing them and adding durability. We're still going to add a gloss coat to this as well, but also if you happen to slip your grip because the glue was starting to tack up on cure, there's a pretty good chance that the materials aren't going to unravel on you. They're just going to stick there and you can re-grab them and finish tying up the fly. Trim off the excess. Now we're just going to take our red holographic mylar or flashaboo. We take three or four wraps right at the back of the body to build up a little red butt and then just open up the ribbing. Chronomids have nine body segments so ideally you'd like seven ribs but just get into a rhythm of open spaces right up to the hook eye and tie off the excess. Come in nip away the excess. Now for the thorax you could easily simply just build up a neat little thread thorax but I'm a bit of a traditionalist so I'm going to use a single strand of peacock hurl and you can see the majority of the hurl is always gathered on one side of the stem so I'm going to tie that in with that facing down so when the half turn I put in it to start wrapping it that fuzzy side is going to stick out and give that nice illusion of bulk and cover up the thread work and we're just going to wrap this around probably three to five times, just simply build up a nice balanced thorax. The thorax shouldn't go back any further than the length of the bead. And we're just going to come up, weave our thread through, a couple of wraps, trim away the excess. So you can also trim your yarn gills at this point, so I'm just going to come in, moisten my fingers a bit, gather them, and trim them about the length of the bead. That's your proportions no matter what the size. And then to add a little durability, the thorax area and the peacock, I'm just going to coat that tying thread with the brushable glue and let it carry into the base of the hurl and we get good security without the risk of trying to put our glue onto the bead and let it roll in and run the risk of accidentally matting all those beautiful peacock hurl fibers down. Three or four turn whip finish tying portion of your black sally is complete. And now we just want to add a little bit more durability and shine to this fly. We're going to use some UV clear fly finish in the flow formula. Beautiful stuff from Loon Outdoors. Remains tack free. The beauty of this stuff is you can apply it. You can let it disperse around the fly just by letting gravity sort of roll it around. When you get to the, where it likes, it fills in all the little irregularities on the fly, not that the fish matter terribly much. And then you just come in with your UV light and give it a cure. And this, sometimes that shows up on camera, but that white gill material really pops. Good fluorescence, so this fly stands out at depth. So we've got a very durable chronomid pattern here. The Black Sally, black and red, if you don't know where to start, Black and red is always a good color. Most of your coronamid species are black. So black and red is an excellent coloration. And this thing is slim, sinks quick, and is a proven producer. So there you go, the Black Sally. Make sure you have a few of these in your coronamid section of your Stillwater Fly Box. For more information on fly fishing, and Stillwater Fly Fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you will find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online Stillwater Fly Fishing Shop. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. In addition, you can also follow me through my social media channels, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching, and please take the time to watch my other tying videos as well.